Now I'm sorry if you guys see me and I'm dying of man flu, I just, I'm just really ill at the moment. But in this video we've got two boa constrictors to feed. We've got Popcorn just up here, now we're waiting for him to move away from that edge because I need to open that door to sort of... What? Yeah, I'm, I'm waiting to open that piece of glass there so that I can actually get a rodent into him without him trying to chew me face off. And directly behind the camera, behind you guys, there's another boa constrictor. They're both getting medium rats and we're probably going to go around and show you all a few little updates as well because we've got loads of little updates. The majority are going to come with the um, reptile room tour that we're going to do in March. That's why I've not really put one up for February because there's just so much going on at the moment. But first, we have to wait for popcorn there to move away from that corner so that we can get the glass open and physically get a rodent into him. I'll tell you one thing I've noticed with popcorn up there. Um, he did have a... Um, infrared heat projector and um, CHE ceramic heat element you'll see that in one of my previous videos where I um, took it apart and had a look at it and I changed them over to one of these um, infrared heat projectors uh, one of them absolutely amazing piece of kit yeah I changed them over to one of them and it's been so much more mobile since actually having that up there but we're going to go up there and we're going to give him a feed and we're going to give um, Rosie, our common boa, a bit of a feed as well. Leave that there, I'll fix that up in a minute. Right, let's move over to, look at that, he's right the way up the top. I need to I need to wait for him to move. Now, I'm sorry if you're going to see, you're all going to see this whole movement sort of thing, camera moving and whatever. Sorry if I sound like I'm dying, I, I am dying. But, you're going to see this all moving because... <coughs> I'm actually moving it all. Right, I'm going to spin this around so that you guys can see. Popcorn all the way up there. I need him out of that corner. But you'll notice straight away some updates that are in this enclosure. I mean, he's got that platform there. He's got a nice little hider built down there. He's got a lot more woodwork in there. Bigger water dish. And I'm hoping he moves. I'm going to just try and move him now. Um... I've got a little snake hook. We'll see what actually happens. See if he'll um, come out. You're going to come out, mate. Try and open it from the other side. There we go. You can see the sort of updates in there now. I need to clear his water out, obviously. He's got that basking platform over the back just there. And he's got that hide down there, which is all dead naturalistic and whatever. I use that more for a sort of a humid hide, just because... He seems to appreciate it that a little bit more. Let's um, see if I can get his attention by giving him a rodent. He's just going to get a white one because the other one's picky and she'll only have. Come on, mate. I don't want him to get me because if he does. Oh, he's seen it. He's coming. Do -dum, do -dum. Yeah, I built this tank quite a while ago, actually. It's a double-decker tank, um, because directly underneath it is Hugo, the Savannah Monitor. Are you coming for this one, mate? Come on, don't be going around on that angle, because you're going to come and get me. You come over here so you're a bit more in camera. Please, matey. Move the camera around a bit. Are you going to come and take this or what? This rat's waiting for you, buddy. He's hungry for you. Oh, here he comes. He's... Has he smelt it? Does he know it's here? He's been out hunting for food for a good um, few days now, so it's about time that he did have a meal. Don't you want it, mate? His tongue's just stopped flickering. Uh, 
there we go. That scared the living daylights out of even me. <laughs> Hi everyone who's just joined. Um, King of Tarn, if you've got a thermostat and a powerful enough heat mat, then it should work. But it's always better to go for, um, not even a heat bulb. Here, I'll show you what I'm using, especially in this enclosure. This thing here. I'll zoom out so that you can see it. The Mega Ray Heat Projector. Here you go. I've just had it out at the beginning of the video, but obviously if you weren't... There you go. That's what it is. It just fires out all the infrared. And obviously, animals see in ultraviolet and infrared, so um, it's just absolutely beneficial. This heats up into their deep core tissue. But if you've got a thermostat, it should work perfectly fine. Right, I'm going to shut him up. And... Oh, there we go. We'll move around. Obviously, I've got the studio light on there, so I can't really do much there just yet. This will take a little bit of light fiddling around to do, so to speak, because I've got to lower the tripod, get the studio light spun around in such a way that you can actually see it. Now, I'm sorry if you see all the kids' toys and stuff. There's a lot of mess here. It's all my camera and filming equipment on the top, and obviously my temperature gun, and just loads of bits and pieces. But... Let me just spin this around. Now, this is Rosie. She's our common boa constrictor. Now, I've kept her because she was our first ever rescue. Because um, obviously we do rescue quite a few animals, as and when we have the facilities to do so. And she was the first one we ever rescued. She always knows it's feeding time or filming time when we have the uh, softbox turned around to her. She needs a good clean out. She's got a bit of a shed down that back corner which must have only happened a few days ago. But there she is. Let's get a rodent. Ah, sorry, guys. <laughs> Let's get her a rodent. Now, she's like popcorn. He had a small meal. This is Rosie. She's getting a big meal today because she had a small meal last time. She knows what's happening. Let's get a bit. Here we go. Whoosh. There we go. She's just had one. There she is. Now she, I don't know why, but she just prefers the darker coloured rats. It's a bit strange, but it is what it is, I suppose. But they're the two boa constrictors that have been fed. Hi. Now, let's run around. A few of the little updates. Uh, spin you around, check out. Popcorn always lets go of the rodent and then goes back in just like that. Look at that. It's found the head straight away and he's going to take it down instantly. Just amazing. But yeah, got the platform up there with that hide and just a load more rock uh, stick work in there and Buddha Buddha face. Yeah, he's just absolutely stunning, as you'd expect. Right. Now, I've got to be quiet because Jacob's asleep in that room. Just over there. But we're coming to the reptile room. And again, a couple of updates. The lights are off because I've got a Plank Pro light over the, all this sort of stuff here. Um, but yeah, those plants, those lights are off. It's that time of day. Let me spin around and show you doo -doo -doo. this one. Um, actually, I'll get... There we go. Right, so in here is the morning geckos. Now, you might remember I had two adult morning geckos and a sub-adult morning gecko. Well, the sub-adult actually got to the size of an adult, so I've sort of put them all in together. You might see the odd one kicking around. They're probably going to be on that back wall there somewhere because that's where the heat is. Uh, let's see if I can spot one for you. Uh, we can come back to that. It's not a problem. Got a baby one in there. And obviously some plant grow down there. Some more baby enclosures there. Some more plants over there. Tarantula in there. I don't know if he's going to be out on a boat. Oh, 
all the way uh, down there somewhere in that hide. Yeah, you can't really see him. But that's where he's our Asamani tarantula. We've got a titty cow algae polossum in there. The morning gecko's over there. The superworm breeding there. The dubia roach breeding in there. I zoomed in far more than I'd like. Um, now the leopard geckos, they've been paired up now for a day. So um, I'm hoping to get the babies off them fairly soon. They've got their lay box in there. That's the super pastel yellow belly under there. She's had a feed earlier. So I was kind of hoping, as it goes, she's still got the rodent. Yeah, she's still got it. She's still trying to find the head. She's had it for about 20 minutes. <laughs> in there is the Scolopendra Black Flame, which needs a good clean, but it's a venomous animal and I ain't touching it. Straightforward, just, no, nah, I'm not touching it. <laughs> What's in here? Dubia breeding's going great. There we are. But the updates mainly are the oh crap. The morning geckos have jumped into this enclosure. And I will try and find one. I think that's one there on the back corner. It's quite funny, as soon as I chucked them in here, they went straight down to the food there. But it's that bushy in there, you probably won't see them for ages. But yeah, that's the main um, update in here, is that. Still don't know what to do with that Rexy Breeze. Yeah, that's everything. Let's go check on Popcorn and Rosie. Rosie's still coiled up. Popcorn's playing fetch with her rodent. His rodent, sorry. But that's that. Nothing real special. But yeah, I've noticed a massive difference in his manoeuvrability. He's just a lot more mobile since he's had the um, infrared heat projector. It's just, it's just, I'm mind blown by how much it benefits him I never once thought it would benefit him uh, poof. Yeah, I never thought it would benefit him as much as it actually has but he tends to be a lot more active since he's had that infrared heat projector and I don't know where I've put my uh, tripod it's all good anyway because they've all been fed now anyway so I'm going to love you all and leave you all there um, thanks for tuning in I appreciate you all peace out